Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, at today's IT Vendor Management Office Open House. Um, we are right uh, at one, so we want to give folks another minute or so uh, to join. So appreciate those of you who are timely uh, and, and going to extend a, a little grace to those who may be working through some tech transitions. So if you could bear with us for a few seconds, uh, we'll allow additional folks to, to join us. And as we uh, have additional folks joining our uh, meeting room, if you will, today, just as a reminder, this is a Fed only event. Um, we encourage anyone who is not a member of the federal government uh, to leave uh, the meeting. Uh, no press at this particular event. We are planning uh, an industry day uh, in the coming months and welcome you to join us then. We'll get additional information out for members of that audience. But again, this is a Fed only event, no press. Thank you very much. And okay, we're right at one at 101. We have a packed agenda uh, this afternoon. Uh, as a reminder, this event is being recorded. Um, so you are aware, a Fed-only event, uh, lots to cover today. Thank you for joining us. Um, and with kind of that introduction, I want to pass it over to Vera Ashworth to kick us off. Uh, um, welcome and thank you to everyone for joining us at our open house uh, to introduce the IT Vendor Management Office or IT VMO to you, our, our agency stakeholders, you know, agencies across government. And really this is the next step in category management and buying as an ecosystem or as an organized enterprise. I'm Vera Ashworth, Deputy Assistant Commissioner in GSA's IT Category Office, which is within the Federal Acquisition Service. And I'm fortunate to wear two hats also as your government-wide IT Category Manager. Um, the ITVMO is a partnership between OMB, GSA, NASA, NIH, and DOD. Together, we established the ITVMO with the goal to be a trusted advisor and to provide government-wide acquisition uh, intelligence. We would not be here today without the vision, support, et cetera, of OMB and, and our executive sponsors. And with that, I'd like to welcome Leslie Field, the Acting Deputy Director for Management in the Office of Federal Procurement Policy, and Maria Rote, the Acting Federal Chief Information Officer, to give us some welcoming remarks from their vantage uh, at OMB. So Leslie, would you like to get us rolling? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Leslie Field. I'm, I'm normally uh, OMB's uh, Deputy Administrator in the Office of Federal Procurement Policy, but currently serving as the Acting uh, Deputy Director for Management. So. I am getting a really good look at how all of our category management practices can help uh, promote a lot of the new policy priorities. So launching the IT VMO is a really important step in our category management evolution. So a huge thanks to the IT VMO staff on the call today and to a Jennifer Cook on my team who had the vision for this, um, this effort. Based on our successes over the last several years, uh, I think we as a community have seen just tremendous value in sharing insights and pricing and data and terms and conditions and you know, other important acquisition intelligence, uh, especially in IT. And this concept of a vendor management office is not, is not new. A lot of agencies have done this in various other sectors, but we wanted to be um, in the forefront of expanding that concept government-wide. And I do think it's kind of the next generation of category management infrastructure. So we're really looking forward to working with the team um, to help really advance all of the important levers that we have in the acquisition space uh, to ensure that we're getting the best deal possible uh, for the American people. Uh, the effectiveness of the IT of ITVMO to further sharpen the government's IT intelligence uh, for acquisition really depends on the participation of agencies to inform and share data and share best practices and even worst practices. So we're really excited about having so many of you join us today. I think this will allow us to leverage our collective expertise, turn data into information, um, and increase engagement with our important vendor partners. And uh, I think it really will inform uh, the work of the CIO. 
All right. I don't know. I'm back. I think. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. Excellent. Hey, hey sorry about that. Zoom hung up on me, and I think Zoom does not want me to be on this call today. <laughs> hey, Leslie, it lost both of us, so. Okay. Um, Over to you, Leslie. Yeah, sorry. So just really quickly, I, don't, I hope hopefully you got most of that, but um, I did just want to say one thing very quickly. Um, the new Made in America EO is really designed, if folks haven't seen it, is really designed to help American businesses uh, compete in strategic industries and to help America's workers thrive. Um, and it's, of course, part of the Build Back Better initiative. And I think this order is a great opportunity to leverage the talents and knowledge of the IT VMO and all the other category managers. So in particular, as we consider where there may be ways of using our buying power to strengthen the domestic supply chains and increase job opportunities in our country, I think the IT VMO and the category managers can really add to that conversation. So looking forward to that, a lot more to come of course, but um, with that, if I'm still with you here, I'll turn it over to Maria. All right. Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Vera and the entire team for the launch of the, um, in this open house for the uh, ITVMO. You know, during the uh, development of CEOs, the Civilian Enterprise Office Solutions, you know, the teams involved in the process really recognize the importance of a clear market acquisitions intelligence for both government and industry. And and really the need for consistency in IT pricing, contract terms, conditions, and just better information sharing across the agency and, and more unified messaging to the vendor community was really clear. So this need was identified a while back and, and it is just really important. And we know that, that agencies don't have access to the information they need all the time to make informed buying decisions. And sometimes there's mixed messages, you know, on where to procure and how to procure. And this is where the ITVMO comes in. And the, in the pandemic, really, it highlighted the need to move quickly and get bureaucracy out of the way. As a CIO at an agency a year ago, I saw how fast the acquisition process could move when that bureaucracy was out of the way. And I really think the ITVMO lends to that to really drive through a lot of those barriers. And they're gonna fill that critical need by leveraging existing government-wide procurement data, contract, um, IT contract technical expertise. I know that there's some um, contract experts out there that are excellent. And I work with some on IT procurements that really know how to find their way through that through um, and execute on, on make IT contracts happen. Again, this is also needs on category management, shared agency IT and, and sharing AG, agency, but I can't talk today, IT acquisition knowledge to make sure agencies are making smart um, and cost-effective decisions that really meet the needs of their agency and their mission. The two-way communication with the executive council, the CIO council, the CIO council and agencies is really a good way to stay connected and abreast of IT acquisition and opportunities. And I talk with Leslie, um, I think uh, daily, and I think these days at least twice a day now <laughs> with the transition, but Leslie and I work really closely together and we want the IT VMO to help broker communications and really sustain engagement across the federal community. So I wanna thank everybody for being here today. Recognize that we're looking to partner with agencies to really provide the support needed to really execute on those optimal IT acquisitions. Again, as a CIO, I saw firsthand how we can get bureaucracy and noise out of the way and work together and work collectively to execute and get things done. So I am really looking forward to the ITVMO and how they can help with all of that. So back over to you, Varentine. Thank you so much, Leslie and Maria. That was great. Um, and I appreciate uh, all your support to, to get us here to this day. And um, I love uh, in particular, Maria, I feel like we need, a, we need you. So if you are one of those experts, there are plenty of ways to engage and, and that's a message you'll hear throughout the time here. Um, if we can move to the next slide, I'd like to recognize the extended ITVMO team. Um, as mentioned, we have a lot of great support at OMB and in particular over the last year, Jennifer Cook has worked so closely with us, as well as Jamie and Alex, to get us to this point and to get the, the IT VMO up and rolling. 
Um, in the middle section there, you know, my partners on the executive steering committee, um, Darlene and Brian and James, you know, um, and, and the organizations are here and you'll hear from, from those organizations in a little bit. Um, and uh, last but not least, in the, the far right corner is the uh, staff and advisors, or those who are doing the heavy lift. And um, that's led by John Radajewski, who is the ITBMO director, and his team, Kyra, Warren, Bill, and Pang, uh, as well as John and Glennis from NASA and NIH, respectively. So um, one of the things you'll see is uh, we've saved a lot of time at the end for some Q&A and if you will, an informal panel. So um, hopefully you'll be able to ask your questions um, and you know, hear from all of us. Uh, let's go to the next slide on the agenda. Um, once again, I'll probably do it a couple of times. This is a government only event, so no press, please drop off if you are not a federal employee. Um, but we will try to keep to schedule and be respectful of your time and save as much time as we can in q and I'll try to go even faster if I can, just so you can, you know, we can really um, engage with you. Um, so we're going to talk about the, the introduction of services, how we got here, the road ahead. You'll also hear from the uh, IT government-wide uh, category management team on some initiatives that we're doing. Um, and, you know, in particular around small businesses, we know that's a very important area. Um, and we're really looking forward to hearing uh, from you throughout. Um, and uh, the, we, as I mentioned, we have lots of Q&A time at the end to engage. And uh, the other thing is that we have to, to try to engage you early on and keep this two way. We do have some polls that we're going to do throughout the event. Um, and with that, I'm going to kick it over to Max to do our first poll. Thank you, Vera. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So before we get into some of the topics, like Vera mentioned, we did want to get some uh, audience participation and also learn a little bit more about why you're on the call today, what interests you about the ITVMO, and also how the ITVMO can help you kind of meet your agency needs. So with that, uh, Jeremy is going to pop up a live poll. Uh, you, should just, you should have just seen a pop up on your window. Um, and you can go ahead and uh, select uh, the rationale for why you joined us here today. Some of those include, um, you're looking for data intelligence insights that the ITVMO can help provide, subject matter expertise around IT acquisitions, vendor relationship management, um, more information and coordination on the, the BIC uh, contract solutions or IT security and risk management help at your agency. There should also be a kind of general interest uh, selection as well as a uh, open-ended prompt if none of those sort of interest you today. So what I'm gonna do is pause for about 30 seconds, uh, let those answers come in and then move on to the next uh, slide. And Max, if I could add one thing, we appreciate you um, providing responses here. Some of it really is just to give us some additional context and keep you engaged today. But know that we are also taking this information back and we'll use it wherever appropriate to inform our next steps and processes and information that we share. So uh, we certainly uh, appreciate um, you taking the time to, to uh, answer these questions. And some of this information that we provide back may uh, inform some of our processes post this event. Um, and we'll use that to uh, look at new initiatives and efforts moving forward. So thank you, Jeremy. Can we, can we end that poll and then we, we can move on? And we may, we may be re revisiting some of these poll uh, prompts and, and responses come Q&A session or later in, the, in this open house. So the next thing that we wanted to uh, um, poll the audience with is who, who do we have here today? Um, what role at your agency uh, do you fulfill? And also that will help inform, again, like Kyra said, some of the program we, we do going forward. So uh, a, a number of quick selections, please select the, the, the role that best matches your role at your, at your agency. And again, we're gonna take that information and digest it here in real time. So I'm gonna uh, keep that poll open for about uh, 10, uh, 15 seconds and, and let you get your answers in. 
This is a, a really interesting question. I'll talk a little bit about our customers. So it's helpful to see who's joined us here um, today. We may need to think a little broader about who we'll be working with as part of the, the VMO outreach. Yes, especially if you're an other and uh, if you are, specify the, the primary role. Definitely. I did notice in the previous poll that the vast majority of folks are looking for general program information. So we can certainly help you there. So excited to see that. So I see that the answers are now coming in at a trickle. So I want to th thank you for all your poll uh, responses. There will be other polls throughout this session. So uh, look for those. Jeremy, I think we can close the poll now and move on in, uh, in the programming for the open house. And one bit of housekeeping on these polls, um, you may be able to see the shared results in case you were interested now. Um, there's a little arrow there. You need to uh, reduce the size of the poll to move forward. We can't do that for you, just so you're aware. I'll go ahead and close that poll uh, as we proceed with the presentation. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the, the current environment and how we got to where we are. Um, let's go ahead and, and move to the next slide. Um, so as, as mentioned before, you know, agencies have been independently acquiring IT products and services, and, and I think uh, Maria and or Leslie mentioned, we didn't have one single platform where it's easy to share best practices lessons learned, expertise, you know, across government. And we really learn from one another and uh, having that expert in a corner somewhere and sharing um, their best practices really helps us all. So the result is those differing prices for the same products or uh, services, redundant acquisition uh, efforts, differing terms and conditions, and really the inability to see across government you know, um, if there are risks with a particular product or, or service. Um, so, so to get to that goal of buying as an, as an ecosystem, as an uh, organizational enterprise, um, we really need a shared voice to engage with the vendor community. Um, it's a bridge two way, you know, so we're here to support uh, you as stakeholders in the agencies, but also uh, to interact with, with the vendor community and really help with that acquisition intelligence. And you know, there, there's been comments already about data, but you cannot underestimate the power of data and being able to mine it and turn it into information and really having data-driven decisions um, and subject matter experts. And, and really just to support that smarter, faster um, IT buying power. So let's go to the next slide. Um, so we did have a milestone in the FY21 plan for IT category management. And during that time, we were investigating gaps, um, challenges, opportunities, and really um, working to establish for the IT BMO the scope, the mission, um, the stakeholders and stakeholder engagement, uh, the governance and operations. You know, how are we, are we going to make this work? And uh, we did spend a lot of time engaging with agencies as well as um, you know, doing some listening tours with, with industry. So if you can go to the next slide. Um, so our goals, we've talked a lot about these and I do wanna make sure we get time uh, to dig into the details, but uh, really it's that whole government approach where we've got program staff contract specialists, vendors um, and industry, subject matter experts, all working together to solve you know, that common IT acquisition uh, challenge or problems that we have. So um, let's move to the next slide. And so on October 1st, at the beginning of the FY21 fiscal year, we formally launched uh, the IT Vendor Management Office and uh, we were very excited about making that milestone and we've been very busy, you know, leading up to that date as well as since. Um, and if you can go to the next slide, Maria had talked a little bit about, um, you know, some of our governance. And so I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about our two primary entities that are engaged in the governance for the ITVMO. You know, this is a partnership, a collaboration 
of many organizations. Um, again, OMB uh, is our biggest advisor, as well as the CXO councils, in particular, the Chief Acquisition Officer Council, the Chief Information Officer Council, and the Chief uh, Information Security Officer Council. And we've done some joint meetings and briefings, um, and, and it's really been a great community to engage with and help us with our strategic goals and objectives. Our partner agencies in the steering committee and the ESC include GSA, as I mentioned, I'm dual-hatted, uh, NASA, NIH, and uh, DOD. And um, now I'd like to turn it over uh, to, to Darlene, and then Glennis to talk a little bit about, uh, to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their programs. So Darlene, would you like to start? Thanks, Vera. I, uh, well, I was on mute. So uh, yes, thanks for the uh, introduction and information and excitement that I'm hearing online. That's always good that uh, I think there's several large agencies that are um, really behind this effort and, and see the value in it. So uh, so just a, a quick one or two minute uh, overview of NASA Soup for those online who aren't aware. Uh, we are a, a OMB appointed GWAC and our contract is for uh, the full realm of uh, IT products and services as well. Um, we've been in existence about 26, 27 years now and uh, really here to just uh, be able to provide support to all federal agencies for any of those IT uh, requirements that they may have forthcoming out of their agencies. Uh, a good way to find out more about us is to go to our website and, and there's folks that can walk you through that. But if you're not familiar with us, please give us a call and uh, we'd be happy to, to talk with you. Thank you. Um, Glynis. Hello, I'm Glynis Fisher, and I am standing in today for Brian Goodger, who is the acting NITAC director. NITAC consists of three OMB BIC GWACs for IT services, solutions, and commodity needs. We do have a specialty task area for health IT, which is why we are located at NIH. And you can use NITAC um, any federal agency can use NITAC, and we also offer assisted acquisition services in the event an agency is not comfortable or seeking a CO with deep IT experience. All three of our GWACs are 10-year IDIQ contracts, and um, again, we also, like NASA, Soup have extensive information on our website and encourage people to use that as their first stop. And it's a great way to understand what we do and to connect with us if you ever are interested in learning more about NITAC or getting training. So thank you. Thank you. And I guess I should put on my ITC hat as well and say, you know, within ITC, we, of course, are, are focused on making it easier for civilian and defense customers to achieve their, their IT goals. We've got a, a suite of BICs and a full suite of, of uh, solutions as well. So the great news is, is there's lots of uh, options, you know, from, from a government-wide standpoint. And so that is, is sort of our executive steering committee, you know, making sure we're staying on track um, and uh, getting that right support and advisory um, uh, support. And, uh, and then uh, the other entity for governance is our program management office. And that's really where we've got a small team. We've got a long list and big goals. And so this is back to the we need you. Um, and, and I'll get into a little bit of that. Um, let's go to the next slide. And John will definitely make a pitch as well. Um, we really want to engage uh, the, full, the full suite of, of all the federal um, expertise that's out there. So to get to this point, we've done a lot of stakeholder engagement. As I like to say, help is defined by the recipient. So we certainly don't want to you know, march out and do what we think is best. We want to make sure what we're doing is actually helpful to the community. Uh, so to get to this point, there have been a lot of meetings, as um, Maria mentioned, there are agency VMOs, we've, we've um, 
uh, spent some outreach and talking to them. Ozdaboos, uh, the big solution owners that you know are in the steering committee as well, and acquisition uh, professionals. Um, also, we did uh, agency survey. Again, back to the help is defined by the recipient. We um, went to the CIO and CAO council. It's great that those organizations are meeting together regularly. As I like to say, uh, you can't have great IT if you can't buy it. And so having um, you know, the acquisition, acquisition community and IT community working really closely together is, is so important. Um, but we did that survey to make sure as we were putting together our plans, we're like, well, is this really what people need? Um, and the other way we really need to focus on getting the job done is through the integrated project teams. Um, and that's been successful in a lot of avenues in the past, and that enables us to put together those teams of experts. Um, and if you've got an area of expertise, um, you know, that's really, you know, how we, we can leverage the best of government um, to, to get our work done. And so um, at this point, I'd like to transition over to the, you know, what we're doing and, and pass the baton over to John Redajewski um, to, to talk about where we are. Thank you, John. Thanks, Vera, uh, appreciate it. And again, welcome to our open house and uh, really thank you for taking the time to be here. We appreciate it. It's uh, we're going to need your help. Uh, it really is a partnership. Uh, we're a federal wide office, uh, and I'll be leaning heavily on on SMEs throughout the federal space to to support this office. And I'm I'm not bashful about doing that if, as you get to know me. Uh, so I wanted to cover a few things the, this afternoon. Uh, part of a little more context on the background of how we got started, uh, kind of where we're headed. Uh, talk about priorities and our framework for operations and then a little bit about the structure and the IPT structure Vera mentioned uh, about how we're going to develop our acquisition intelligence and get that shared out to to all of the federal agencies. Um, so in my role at GSA I've had uh, a couple of really uh, great jobs. I mean I'm really one of the luckiest guys at, at GSA, I think, because I got to lead the software and hardware categories and uh, and really, you know, got involved in cloud and and just right in the middle of a lot of great things. And uh, so I really had a front row seat to uh, the challenges the, the agencies are facing, uh, you know, in acquiring IT products and services. I think Maria talked a little bit about them. Vera had a few uh, I'm just going to hit these quickly, but uh, you know, it it is it is a challenge in this space. Uh, you know, especially in, in some of the newer technologies, and especially cloud. You know, in my seat, I'm not seeing cloud prices decrease. I'm seeing them increase. Uh, you know, and then and that brings about a whole set of issues. We're seeing inconsistencies in IT pricing, uh, cybersecurity, supply chain risks. Uh, agencies are really struggling to make decisions with incomplete information in, in a lot of cases. And these are, you know, major acquisitions. Uh, we're seeing a lot of inconsistent pricing. What, what agencies pay for things is, is different in some cases, whether the same products and, and or services. Uh, signing non-favorable terms and conditions, which is, is really one of my pet peeves. So we really want to work on that in the VMO to make sure we provide you the the best T's and C's possible that are favorable to you. Um, and, you know, to fully realize the benefits of uh, category management, uh, you know, the, the message is we need a shared voice. You know, it, it seemed to work uh, very well in CIOS. So I wanted to take a minute and just talk about CIOS in, in general, just kind of introduce it again if you're, if you're not familiar with it. But uh, really it was an initiative started about two years ago at, at OMB. Uh, you know, Sean Ruff and uh, Dave Bottom kind of leading that and hope, hope they're on today. Uh, Jennifer Cook and a lot of others. And there were probably eight agencies involved. And I, I was able to join that that IPT and I thought it was a great, a great exercise. I learned a, a ton of information and I think the agencies did as well. Uh, it was really about, uh, you know, trying to take a bite out of the apple and they decided to focus on email and collaboration uh, you know, in a working group setting to, to see if they could do a little bit better, uh, 
you know, not only sharing information, but the, the main objective was to create a government-wide vehicle that all the agencies could order off of. Well, after a series of meetings, that didn't quite evolve. There were lots of challenges uh, where agencies were at different points and, and that and that in their acquisitions or, you know, they had to, to you know, bundle some stuff from, from other, other uh, you know, legacy products. But a great deal came, a great deal of good came out of that, that, that working group. Uh, we learned a lot about uh, terms and conditions, you know, pricing, some of the challenges they were facing, uh, you know, best practices were shared and distributed. And it was really an activity where the, uh, some of the agencies were a little bit, maybe I'd use the word not as mature as others in, the, in their acquisition uh, model of thinking. I mean, learned a ton. And, uh, and really a lot of the agencies came up to a, to a level playing field. So the CIOS is still continuing. Uh, it, it's still being led by, by Alex over at OMB. Uh, he's doing a great job, uh, you know, trying to, trying to continue the, the good work that Sean and Dave started. Uh, but, you know, some of the challenges are, are, are going to be, uh, you know, how do we expand that, right? How do we, how do we duplicate that? Because we have, you know, hundreds and, you know, thousands of vendors and, and probably hundreds of very large vendors and, you know, and, and everybody's trying to acquire, right? So we need to, we need to expand that. So go to the next slide. So the journey, right? A uh, little bit about the journey. So it started in April, I think, and maybe earlier from Jennifer Cuck's standpoint, because it was really, she did a great job of kind of casting this vision and getting leadership attuned to the need. Um, and so a lot of discussion took place early on in, in, in calendar year 2020, uh, looking at challenges, gaps, you know, how do we form and how do we continue this good work? How do we establish the you know, operating norms and, and get the priorities in sync? How do we support all the agencies for their upcoming acquisitions? So a lot on the table and a lot to think about. So it's kind of self-evident that uh, you know, the, best, the best way to do this was to continue uh, and to centralize some of this stuff. So the concept of the, you know, the ITVMO uh, you know, was brought out and the ITVMO was established. Uh, you know, we're on a five-year plan and it's, it sounds like that's, boy, that's a long time. It's going to take you five years to get there. Well, it's going to take us five years to mature, to get to the level of maturity where, you know, where we can actually, uh, you know, cover all of the suites of vendors that are in play, you know, provide the right level of training, expertise, uh, you know, oversight, review uh, of terms and conditions, you know, statements of work, SUS, all, all of that type of stuff that, that is part of an acquisition. So we need to do that vendor by vendor and, and kind of pick our spots. So right now we're in the growth phase. Um, and in that growth phase, we're, we're really trying to, we have an established budget. We have, uh, we've had hired FTEs. We have, you know, one of the offices established it's being run out of GSA, but we've got strong partnerships with NASA and NITAC, you know, being led by OMB and, and OMB and we get a lot of their direction from the CIOs and CAOs who are driving the requirements. So I think uh, either was Maria or Vera mentioned a survey that was conducted very recently with the CIO, CAOs. I was really adamant that we, that we press for that early on to get their, their requirements. And, and the good news is it, it uh, you know, hit all the hot buttons that we had expected. We've got, you know, four or five OEMs named uh, that we're going to work on. I'll, I'll, we'll have, we'll be able to announce that after our next DSC meeting, exactly who we're going to focus on. Um, and I'll be reaching out, of course, to, to, to share some of that. Uh, but my main focus this year, honestly, is to get a, a web presence stood up so I can start to share all this great content. We've done a lot of work, you know, previously within these big vehicles in the category uh, wide uh, IT, government wide category, as well as uh, in, in an old group I used to chair with uh, Floyd Gross, which was the enterprise software category team where we had, you know, a, a large focus on, you know, vendor management, uh, you know, software inventory, and we created a lot of training around some of the, the OEMs that we're, we're going to be focused on this year. Uh, the last point on this slide is maturity. Uh, you know, so we want agencies 
I really expect as an outcome that if we're mature and we're doing a good job, that at the end of this, and, and hopefully sooner, uh, that agencies are going to think about us first. Oh, I'm doing an acquisition. Let me contact the VMO. Let me have a discussion. Let me review some of the content. Let me make sure I have all the latest and greatest uh, uh, acquisition intelligence on that vendor. Make sure I have the you know the latest terms and conditions that should be adopted. Let me make sure I understand you know the pricing framework. Let me make sure I have a you know a, a macro view of how when I acquire this this product, how I'm going to manage that through the life cycle of the acquisition. So all important things. And uh, we've got a lot of work to get there, but I'll tell you so far, we're getting you know, tremendous support from, from leadership. Uh, you know, the budget seems very healthy. We've got a great contracting team. Uh, and you know, the next step here is to, to really you know, put all this in motion. And, that, and I'll be you know, talking a little bit about how the agencies you know, can, can play here, as well as industry, as well as academia. So we're, we're, my job in the middle here is to really be a, a broker. I mean, we're not going to have, uh, you know, early on at least all of the actionable intel on on every vendor, but we have to have the the tools and the VMO to reach out and find you the answers, you know, within those agencies. We'll be working to that end. Next slide. So the priorities. Uh, these these are pretty high level. Uh, again, I'll have. Uh, another another layer here uh, shortly after our executive steering committee meeting where they can bless uh, you know what the what came out in the survey and and the and what we want to accomplish here that's going to happen very early February so we're you know so soon to follow I'll be able to announce the vendors we're going to work on and start to build you know consensus around that. But I don't know if everybody's had a chance to read the OMB frictionless acquisition capital, but it, but it just, to me, it's fraught with common sense. You know, we need to do better. We need to pay less. We need to, uh, you know, get through these acquisitions, um, you know, a little bit faster. We need to get better value, uh, you know, all of these types of things. So we're going to support that, like in the VMO through helping agencies with the requirements you know, sharing pricing, uh, you know, what's been purchased uh, and provide best practices on, on negotiation and, uh, you know, contract terms and conditions. So I think in, in some cases we're, we're ready to go with some of these vendors already. Uh, supply chain risk management. I really see the VMO as, as, as a broker here. Um, we have lots of factions at GSA work in this. We have uh, entities up at, at OMB and probably throughout, you know, the federal government. Every CIO shop has some focus on this. So our job in the VMO is to get that website up and get this information posted and stay attuned to these groups so we give you all the latest guidance and direction. So that's going to be a key, key priority. And of course, small business is always, uh, you know, front and center. It's, it's certainly front and center. Uh, you know, in the last two administrations, and, and we're seeing, uh, you know, additional innovations and, you know, emerging technologies that, that are really promising. And a lot of these innovations are coming from small companies. So we really need to help these small companies, uh, you know, succeed in the government space. You know, so we have to teach them how to onboard on a big vehicles or their contract of choice, team with other vendors, how to navigate the, the government acquisition space in totality. You know, it's, it's a difficult thing when you're on the commercial side and, and you're trying to learn this. So we, we need to be able to provide that. So we'll be working with, uh, I think Warren Blankenship's gonna talk about this in, in a little bit, but I really hope to partner with the, uh, the SBA on some of this so that we can provide, you know, some not only some of their artifacts, but get some of their SME support and, and have a place where when these agencies, you know, reach out to us, uh, you know, with, with IT uh, innovation that we can point them in the right direction. So next slide. So we already talked, Vera already talked about this governance structure uh, in, in, in some detail. I, I just want to add a little additional context. Uh, you know, through the through the executive steering committee and up through, uh, 
you know, the, the CAOs, CIOs of the, of the ACT agencies, and even all of the, the, the agency CIOs and acquisition officials were really trying to collect those, those requirements. But we, we went on a bucket of those things. And down, if you look at the gray box on the left, that's the ITVMO Program Management Office. We have really three key tenants here and functions. So vendor management, which I've talked about, we really want to be that expert and help collect the, the right and appropriate vendor intelligence on as many vendors as we can. So I'm looking to, to really broaden that. We'll, and the IPTs will be able to work uh, some of the, the higher spend uh, in, in larger OEMs that where the products are maybe more ubiquitous across the federal space. Uh, but there are, you know, thousands of thousands of vendors, right? So we, we'd like to provide some level of, of detail and analysis uh, around those vendors. You know, how are they doing? You know, what are the challenges with those vendors? Things to things to to mention when you when you're negotiating with those vendors. Uh, you know, down that path. Uh, category management is uh, really. Um, you know, if you think of the vendor management office, you can think of the vendor management office as the extension of category management and government-wide category management. Right? The Warren's going to talk uh, a lot about some of the the strategic plan and, and what we're doing, but I think the the VMO office will be doing some of the heavy lifting there around uh, you know supporting not only some of the category activities, but also to help educate. Uh, and, and likewise, the vendor community, right? It's it's a partnership. So as we bring industry in, they, they need to understand our best practices and, and, and so on. And finally, uh, I think data analytics and data is, you know, a key part of our office in, in the context that, uh, you know, if you're an agency and you're doing market research, you, you, you need, you really need to be looking at at, at data at, at various levels. Like, so if you're buying a certain cloud product, so what vendors sell that product? What's the spend? What are the challenges with that? Or if any, you know, with that product or product set or, or set of services. So we'll kind of do this on demand. I, I didn't want to generate, uh, you know, a voluminous amount of reports, but I did want to provide a capability in the VMO where agencies could request data. Uh, and we're working, you know, diligently at that within GSA uh, to, you know, in, in, in the different factions work in that. But we, we made tremendous progress uh, trying to understand what's being purchased and, you know, give all the credit to the to the category managers and, and, and the leadership um, who, who have kind of advocated for that. And we have no shortage of talent, you know, available to help to help work some of this. So if you've got one of those needs, you just you you'll you'll contact us, and uh, you know we'll have that discussion. And last slide, please, for me. Integrated project teams. So it's kind of a busy slide, um, but you know this is this is this is really pretty simple. I'll, I'll break it down. We're going to, if we work together collectively, like, like we did on CIOS as an example, we had eight agencies at the table. We had acquisition officials. We had technical folks. We had, uh, you know, Sean and Dave kind of leading the, the brokering the discussion. We had several conversations with, with, with the vendors in the space, uh, you know, trying to understand uh, and, and, rec and kind of pass on the challenges we're facing and, and trying to broker, you know, better conversations to, to receive better value. So if you look at the bubble chart here, we're going to, you know, what we want to do in the context of these IPTs is work. What I'll do is work through the government uh, points of contact that have been established. Uh, and we'll have a, a kind of a laundry list of the OEMs we're going to be working in, in what cadence. And then we'll, uh, we'll go through this, of a process, a proven process here. It's usually a one, one to three months in duration. You know, we kick it off with, with the first meeting, we're identifying and prioritizing challenges. And then we, we really get into the meat of it. We're sharing information, uh, trying to develop, you know, solutions uh, and, and, and really, uh, you know, recommend solutions that can be adopted by other agencies. So there are you know, hundreds of, of, of sub-agencies and, and hundreds of smaller agencies. They don't have vendor management offices that could, could really benefit from, from this type of, uh, these types of artifacts. 
so more to follow on that. But uh, we're, we're really excited about uh, getting this thing moving, uh, getting getting the real work done. We've been mainly in a, a kind of a stand up role now, trying to get people and, and budgets and, and and get off the ground. So we're we're making great progress, and I, I think we're you know based on the, the CIO CAO survey. We're, we're really close to, to engaging um, around down all these paths that I mentioned. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to uh, Kyra Stewart. She's our, our team lead. Uh, and Kyra has done a fabulous job, uh, you know, really from the onset, standing this office up. Uh, before I took the job, I actually had a long conversation with Kyra about you know, what we're doing and, and where we're headed. And, and she's got a, just a ton of enthusiasm uh, around what we're doing here. So Kyra, uh, over to you. Thank you, John. I appreciate that uh, warm intro. Hey, everyone. I am Kyra Stewart, the team lead, as John mentioned, for the VMO. Uh, some of you may remember me from my time with the TBM Program Management Office, but then the Office of Government-Wide Policy uh, at GSA also. I was there for a few years. Uh, but now as the ITVMO team lead, I'm responsible for daily operations and the delivery of VMO services. So to this end, I hope to have the opportunity to meet with many of you uh, as you engage with the ITVMO in the coming months. I work very closely with John uh, and Warren Blankenship, who you'll hear from next, to develop support and really ensure that program operations align with our category management and vendor management, strategic plans, um, and related priorities. So uh, lots of interesting uh, work happening as we forge really a new path um, in this space. So if we could advance to the next slide. You've heard a little bit uh, of talk about our customers. Uh, so I really wanted to talk uh, to this because it's really important um, for us. Uh, to acknowledge who all you are. So I mentioned during the poll earlier that it was interesting to see, interesting to see who was participating here. Um, so I'll say that this is kind of our preliminary customer base. There may be more folks out there who uh, are relevant and in need of the support. So we're happy to learn and mature um, as uh, time goes on. Uh, but as you might imagine, our customers are really the offices and programs within each agency who are responsible for making IT buying decisions. Uh, in many cases, they are programs and leaders across government, but they're also folks like IT program managers and staffers who are looking to bring in a tool or service to support uh, the agency in meeting the mission, their piece of the mission. So those folks are also customers of ours who we wanna engage. We know that some agencies have established vendor management offices, uh, and we spent some time speaking uh, with them. We share similar goals, obviously, but their focus is direct to the needs of that agency while we're looking to support kind of a government-wide interest. Uh, we'll continue to collaborate with agency uh, VMOs assisting wherever we can uh, and really amplifying the outreach on the best in class vehicles and raising awareness so that um, everyone knows that there are existing opportunities that could support agency needs. Uh, and while we look to help VMOs, we certainly are looking to learn from agency VMOs as well. So where we can amplify lessons learned to support government as a whole, uh, that's certainly something we wanna do. One of the things we've done is we've communicated with stakeholders and setting up the program is to acknowledge that it is not our intent to duplicate anything that's already happening, uh, to replace or prevent agency specific communications, for example, that might be happening with vendors. Our intent is really to coordinate our efforts, to share information and work to really establish a unified voice to vendors on the procurement of common IT goods and services that really result in strategic and advantageous procurements. Um, another of our customer segments are federal government pro uh, professionals who execute and manage vendor contracts. So those are typically our contracting officers. Uh, for this group and other groups, uh, we'll leverage existing resources, share new tools and guidance materials to support COs with their acquisition strategies. Um, and again, as a goal, we're looking to um, increase the use of big vehicles where, wherever possible, share best practices in the space and data that can convey the benefits of leveraging big more fully. 
Another important customer, um, and uh, Vera hit on this before, um, and I would even say a partner, are really our CIOs. As we all know, CIOs shape and implement the policies, strategies, and tactics that really support agency mission and technical requirements. Uh, the ITVMO will engage with CIOs to really blame their expertise um, and leverage that kind of in the trenches knowledge that they have about agency needs uh, and technical requirements. Um, so that's an important group with us as well as our chief uh, acquisition officers um, as well. And lastly, as our name implies, uh, the ITVMO also considers the interests of the vendor community. Uh, in fact, in the coming months, uh, and this was mentioned as well, we are planning an industry day. Uh, much like today, we'll be reaching out to our industry counterparts. We aim to facilitate open forums to engage industry, help reduce barriers to effective communication. Um, an interesting thing in some of our earlier discussions with industry groups, they told us that they'd like, even want to have educated government consumers. So our uh, role is really to better understand what information is needed for both government and industry to promote effective and efficient two-way communication that really result in successful procurement. Next slide. So we've had quite a bit of talk about kind of our, our service offering. Um, and really the program was chartered to provide agencies with meaningful acquisition intelligence uh, and inform and support faster, smarter buying decisions. Uh, while our name highlights kind of our vendor focus, the program really has five primary services, data analytics, subject matter expertise, um, vendor relationship management, obviously big support and IT security and supply chain risk management. As agencies plan for and develop, say their OEM requirements and strategies, you'll be able to leverage ITMO, ITVMO developed and collected artifacts on things like prices paid for similar products as John has mentioned, standardized terms and conditions that could be adopted for your ELA, we want to help you understand vendor negotiation strategies and best practices to ease communications and negotiations with those groups and utilize best practices to mitigate uh, cybersecurity and supply chain risks. We're lucky to be based in ITC at GSA, where our neighbors are programs like the government wide category management PMO, who have access to a plethora of data that can help inform our decisions. We have experts in various IT sectors and scrim professionals uh, and our executive steering committee partners at NASA suit and NIH NITAC and at DOD really just enhance our resources. Uh, John may have mentioned that we really plan to be a one-stop shop for IT acquisition intelligence. And we think with the support of our partners and neighbors uh, that we'll be best positioned to do this. Um, we are here to serve as your trusted and independent advisor uh, and advocate for IT acquisition. Uh, we want to help agencies buy common IT goods and services in ways that meet your needs and help advance your agency mission. And next slide. We provided a lot of information to you today, I understand, uh, and I want to give you a place where you can go and get more of it. Uh, we've established the ITVMO Max page. Uh, my team should be providing that to you um, in the chat uh, so you all have easy access to it. As with all Max sites, it's designed for federal employee use. Anyone with a .gov or .mil email address will have access. Uh, the portal currently highlights a lot of our general information. We have program documents there and a few quick links to our partner sites uh, and related resources. Uh, we'll also be posting today's recording uh, so that you have access to that as well. Share that with those who weren't able to um, join us. Um, and lastly, um, we are intending to roll out um, a, a public facing site. Uh, so that you, um, we can provide additional information, not only to our government partners and stakeholders, uh, but also to those in industry uh, with whom we hope to engage um, in the coming months. So 
Again, uh, I'm Kyra. Look forward to engaging with many of you all as you seek out the ITVMO for resources. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, or ideas, I encourage you to reach out to us. Uh, please email ITVMO at gsa.gov. And with that, I'll turn it back to Max, who will present our next poll question to you. Thank you, Kyra. Uh, another poll question here for the audience. Um, one of the questions that uh, both Vera, Kyra, and John have all, all mentioned is um, helping support agencies with their best-in-class solutions and, and how they use the best-in-class solutions to procure IT. So to that end, we want to poll the audience to see um, what best-in-class resources are most value-add for your agency and your purposes. So I'm going to open this poll. It should be open now in front of your screen and leave it open for about 15 to 20 seconds. Uh, again, your answers today are going to inform future programming and future resources that the ITVMO um, tries to produce for the community. So your, your, your answers today are really, really helpful, helpful for us, and, and we'll use them going forward. For what it's worth, um, many of these links, most of these links are available on the acquisition gateway. Um, so these are, these are resources that are already available today. Um, but there could be you know, an opportunity to leverage them more, share them more and enhance them going forward in the future. Our, our team should be dropping the link to the acquisition gateway in the chat. I think that, that just happened. Um, but I'll give a couple more seconds for the last uh, couple answers, answers to trickle in. And then Jeremy, I think we can close the poll. Again, the poll, I, don't, I think the, the window will stay up on your screen, but we're gonna go to the next slide. And I'll pass it to uh, Warren to introduce some of the IT category management strategic priorities. Warren, take it away. Uh, hello, I am Warren Blankenship, program manager for the IT government wide category. So again, I wanna thank those of you on the call uh, who just submitted the input on the big resources poll. That information will prove valuable to us in our processes as we move forward in the IT category and the IT VMO. Um, so I work in tandem with OMB, uh, the Category Management Program Office, and the IT VMO, where I manage the day-to-day -day IT category portfolio, which consists of 13 solutions. I also advise the program solution owners on IT policy compliance and category management initiatives. I also help bridge category management and vendor management initiatives through strategic consultation to federal executive stakeholders. So through these partnerships, I helped in metrics, increase insight into data analytics, as you heard Vera, John, and Kyra talk about, support acquisition and contract management, and I aid to improve IT spend analysis. So the FY21 government-wide IT category management plan is developed and executed annually as part of the ongoing OMB category management efforts. The plan includes 11 initiatives that span the categories of spend under management, best in class, cost avoidance, small business, and supplier and demand management. So prior to me getting into our, okay. So prior to me getting into our FY21 initiatives, I wanted to highlight a, a FY20 initiative where we successfully overhauled the IT product service codes. That was the first major overhaul of those codes since 1978. So that effort helped us to modernize, simplify, and improve the codes and documentation supporting the IT procurements. The new PSCs will more accurately reflect the current technology and procurement methods, which provide a better understanding of IT spending across the federal government. So in FY21, getting back to our initiatives, uh, the IT category continues to work with OMB to identify initiatives in support of IT modernization. Uh, upcoming, we are looking at acquisition vehicles for potential big designation to include 8A Stars 3 and Polaris, which was formerly known as Alliance 2 Small Business. Uh, also in FY21, the IT category will also look for continued ways to leverage the IT VMO. In doing so, the IT VMO has developed a complementary FY21 implementation plan to our government-wide IT category plan to break down the IT category initiatives 
uh, into phased actions to advance both category and vendor management practices. And as you can see on the chart that's on the screen, uh, which is our key performance indicators for the IT category, uh, for FY20, if you look at the fourth uh, column, the IT category achieved $47.4 billion in spend under management, and that was out of a total of $74.5 million in obligated dollars. We also achieved $4.6 billion in cost avoidance, which was mostly driven by a new methodology and baseline that we recently established. Uh, we also achieved a reduction of 30.8% in tier zero or open market contracts, which reflects a reduction of 33,348 contracts government-wide. Uh, and we also achieved a 36% small business utilization achievement. Um, our actual goal for small business utilization is 37%. And we are working diligently to work with entities such as the Oslo Council and SBA to expand our horizons in the small business arena. Next slide, please. So under the spend under management framework, we are partnering with agencies to assist in meeting category management key performance indicators. This past quarter, we drafted a strategy and approach to research, contact, and recommend an acquisition path for targeted agencies. In addition to current BIC criteria, we will also be improving our category aligned BIC performance by ensuring implementation of supply chain risk management, National Defense Authorization Act of FY19 uh, for Section 889 Parts A and B across all of our IT BICs and to help promote BIC awareness and utilization among customer agencies. So it's safe to know that all of our IT BICs are fully in compliance with, po with parts A and B of section 889. Next slide, please. This year, we have also continued to support the government-wide strategic solutions for laptops and desktops with the formulation of version seven. In addition to working on version seven, the GSS group is just finishing what the future will look like. We will also be exploring possible automation of OMB integrated data collection requirements as they relate to our GSS team and the federal mobility group across government. We will be working with both groups to assess relevant data elements in those areas. In addition, we will also be looking into implementing a baseline cost avoidance methodology to be applied across the IT BIC contract solutions for professional services. And that consists of IT outsourcing and IT consulting. We have established a Tiger team to assess the data environment and they are in the process of completing a feasibility study on the methodology and data analysis. We will also be collaborating with the professional services category in this space to explore other methodologies in that space. So also in FY21, uh, we will be working to improve small business engagement and utilization across government. You heard John mention that earlier. Uh, we will continue to partner with the act I act Small Business Alliance to host quarterly small business webinars that are aimed at educating current and prospective small business contractors on being successful under the auspices of category management. We are scheduling our next webinar for what we have here is February or early March, but it'll probably be more like mid-March. Uh, we should have details of the webinar posted within the next couple of weeks. We have also created a small business engagement strategy. And as part of that strategy, we are meeting with the Osdebu Council, GSA programs, SBA, and other stakeholders to better understand small business needs. As the IT VMO team has been highlighting in earlier sections, we, we will also be looking to increase knowledge of OEMs to support agency acquisition strategies. We are looking forward to posting existing resources on the top vendors on our website and Max portals coming soon. Next slide. The final two initiative areas include demand management. Hey, yes. I think I'm on. Um, would you mind if I covered this? Okay. Part? It's just one slide. Sure. Um, one last uh, part, uh, two initiatives we're supporting, uh, demand management and cross category collaboration for uh, demand management. Uh, the team is working with the IT category data team. Uh, the goal there is to understand current analysis and tools, um, which will better inform the technology lifecycle report. Um, and the intent of the technology lifecycle report 
uh, is to increase awareness among customer agencies on how the technology lifecycle aligns with the acquisition lifecycle. Um, our last initiative here, uh, it's meant to sustain ongoing support to the security and protection and medical categories. Uh, they're updating uh, their PSCs. Um, we underwent something similar as Warren mentioned earlier. Uh, we want to you know, provide support to them, any lessons learned. Um, we believe that this collaboration will help ensure consistency uh, across the categories. And with that, I'm paying for, uh, I believe we have a poll to present to you. Thank you, Peng. Uh, back to Max. This is the final poll that we're going to present today. So Jeremy should have just popped it up on your screen. And we, we've talked a lot about data and data analytics. And one of the things that we're interested in interested in soliciting from you are like, what are those data gaps that maybe we can help fill or help um, in a government-wide fashion address? So popping up in your screen, please fill out that uh, survey. I'll leave it open for about 15 to 20 seconds and let you get your answers in. So th thank you for all for those who submitted their answers. I see, I see they're only trickling in now. Um, I'm gonna pass it back to John, uh, John Radajetsky, and capture your, uh, your answers to this poll question um, on the MAX portal, like, like Kyra mentioned. So John, if you'd take it away. Yeah, no problem. Can you hit the next slide? Thanks, one more. John, and I think Vera wanted to add something, if she could, before you got into the call to action. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Vera. Yeah, yeah. If you can just go back a second. I just wanted to pull the thread a little bit on something that Pang had mentioned, it, you know, um, the data and the data aspect. So we certainly are leveraging the government-wide category management PMO for a lot of the data, but we're also investing um, and, and one of our members uh, who, who um, is not on the panel is Bill Spencer and so some of the work that he's been doing. So uh, John, I don't know if you wanted to talk any more about data, but that is such a big key in supporting you know, acquisition excellence and that's something that we're focused on, you know, whether it's um, cost avoidance, uh, um, et cetera. Yeah, I think Bill is, uh, so Bill's a, a, tr a true expert. He's done a fabulous job building the, uh, really uh, a gateway and, a, a, you know, a backend database and, and generating all the right reports and queries that, you know, so it's provided tremendous insight into ITC. And I think the good news is, is a lot of that's been built and, and can be, you know, automated to some degree. Uh, so we're going to have uh, you know, probably at the industry day we'll be we'll have a little more information on this and and certainly you'll be hearing from from Bill in the future uh, as we get uh, as we get some of these requests and we'll have a, a spot on the website uh, to to kind of highlight some of the capabilities that we can we can provide there but uh, yeah we're excited uh, I was excited when Bill joined the VMO uh, because he was off doing. You know, bigger stuff at the at the fast level, but uh, we were able to to re retain them and, and bring them in. Uh, so again, yeah, and I just wanted to highlight the awesome team. You know, uh, the full the full suite of team. It makes it so much easier to do this job. You know, with all of the the hard work of everyone behind the yeah. scenes and our partners and right. the call to action, which is, don't you want to be part of our team? <laughs> yeah. So next slide, yet yeah, one more. Yeah, so first, so you heard a lot today and uh, thanks for hanging in there. You know, we're for an hour and 15 into this. We heard from our leadership. We heard from, get a chance to hear a little bit from our, our team here in the VMO about where we're headed. But I, but I think the, the theme for today is, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll echo, it's really gonna be about uh, collaboration uh, and, and for us in the middle, I mean, I'm, I'm really a broker here. That's the way I look at myself. I'll have vendors on one side. I'll have the agencies on the other side. And my job is to foster those communications and help the agencies, you know, get the best value out of their upcoming acquisitions. And to do that, we, we're not going to be able to do this wholly within our, our small team. Um, and we just don't have... Um, you know, those, all of those contracting resources to, to, to cover every vendor. But what we do have 
Uh, and what we're going to need is a coalition of the willing. And I think, uh, you know, going back and looking at, at uh, CIOS, which was the Civilian Enterprise Operating System, that was the email and collaboration, uh, kind of the, the focus we were looking at, because that was ubiquitous. Everybody's doing email and collaboration is a good place to start. But, but secondarily to that, um, yeah, that was successful because of the agency support we had. Uh, and, and it is amazing. And I think, but I, I'd also I'd suggest that even if you're, you know, in an agency at a more junior level and you want to join an IPT, I, I would strongly encourage that because you'll benefit greatly, you know, from the discussion. So I, I job here in the VMO is to help educate, to bring together a community and a coalition of the willing to solve around certain challenges and problems. We'll focus primarily in the acquisition space. So a couple things here that we're looking for, and these, and these are really easy. I mean, they really we have a we have an email address, and I, I can promise you we're monitoring that and and paying close attention to that. And once we build a website, we hopefully we'll have uh, some additional automation and, and and eventually chat and those kind of capabilities. But but early on, we've got an email and and, and we respond to this uh, when we're looking at these things daily. So if you're looking at, you know, new acquisitions or you're facing a challenge, you know, please reach out to us. And, and my job will be to kind of broker you and, and, and hand you off to, you know, known experts in that space or provide you with, with documentation uh, and, and artifacts that, that can support you in that. So don't don't be bashful there. So even from, from, from COs to the technical folks, to the people just involved in the acquisition, uh, you know, do it early, right? So we're looking, mainly we're most successful if we're looking at things and, and larger things that are 12 to 18 months out. That's probably where the, the IPTs will coalesce around. So we have time to to affect some of the, the guidance that, that's going to be provided, you know, in, in these IPTs. So that's the first ask. Reach out when you can. Second ask I mentioned, volunteer for a, a project team. So how we're going to roll this out is I, I will be, we'll have a meeting and I've, I've been working with Jennifer Cuck and kind of some of the details here, but we want to bring all the agency points of contact together that have been identified by the, by the different agencies. So there's kind of a single belly button in each agency. And we did that by design. So we didn't inundate, you know, the, the, the shops and the CIO offices but we're hoping that one person in the agency can help coordinate. So if you're working, uh, you know, on a, on a specific OEM for the, for the upcoming year um, and you say, hey, listen, I, th I think we could benefit from this project team. So we'll, we'll, we'll ask that point of contact to help pull that, that agency team together. And, and we promise, I, and I, I will make this promise that the ITVMO is gonna do the heavy lifting in these IPTs. What we're looking for is we're, we're, we want to listen. We want to we want to create and those those artifacts. Uh, we want to start these dialogues and, and have you be part of that. So and we're going to make these fairly short. The, these IPT meetings usually last ninety minutes tops, with six or eight of them to get through. You know what we need to, and then we found through these IPTs that several agencies will just work together. Um, you know uh, on a, on a package which was which is great because there's collaboration in that as well and then hey John, the um i was just curious you know we have a pretty wide audience and i'm not sure that everybody knows what dios and cios are so if if you could just spend a second you know just explaining the acronym and what they are I, there, there may be folks who aren't following yeah, I, I thought i just mentioned it but cios is the civilian enterprise you know office systems and it's just really about uh, all of the tools that you know you use in an agency if you think of microsoft right you think of all the products they bring in the 0365 or you think of google and, and the products they bring you know through google mail google meet google chat uh you know so the cos is, is just still and uh really it's in a it's it's kind of right now it's it's being worked by OMB and and we're trying to uh, do a good job at collaboration. And I know Alex is in the middle. He's trying to get the uh, you know the the agencies educated on a variety of uh, you know good practices 
you know, for negotiating uh, with Microsoft. Right, and learning from the, the DOS. DOS that, was the, yeah. the, the counterpart to that, right? It was just awarded, It's but it's, look, so what DOS is about is they, they just awarded this to, uh, it's all public knowledge, to uh, GDIT and its team. And uh, you know, Microsoft is the is the is the product set that they're trying to integrate, but they're trying to put that on the desktops of uh, you know 3.2 million DoD users, and it's a it's it's a very uh, it, it's a, it's a large uh, it's a tremendously large effort uh, going on. But what they're trying to do there is just really get on the same platforms and use a single integrator to to build that out. So, and if you think about email and collaboration, I mean that's 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 common to, to every agency, right? It's ubiquitous. So that's that. Those are the challenges. But with the good work we did in DOS, you know, with GSA helping to lead that acquisition, it, it made sense even a couple of years ago. Hey, the federal agencies may be interested in, in a CIOS. So that's where that, um, that that's how that working group got formed to kind of follow the the good work that DOS did and the lessons learned. Uh, and so the last ask, I guess, is uh, we, we need SMEs, right? If I'm, I'm looking at this website that we're going to build out and I'll have, uh, you know, I, I'd have sufficient content for phase one, but to really, to really make this useful, uh, we're going to really have to manage this content, make sure it's extremely relevant. Uh, make sure we have the right SMEs, you know, engaged that, that not only provide the content. So we'll be reaching out to, to the agencies, you know, probably through OMB and our ESC council to, to mine some of this data. You know, I, I look at Small Business Administration. They, they, they're always kind of in the forefront of uh, acquisition in my mind. They do, they do a great job. And they've developed, you know, artifacts around negotiation and, and best practices and cloud adoption. And so those are the types of things that we want to share and, and make, make relevant. But we can't, you know, with a small team, I mean, we're going to have to really leverage all the good work that's going on out there. So that, that's the ask. But proactively, if you have something that you can share or you want to share, that would be uh, tremendously helpful to us. Um, and, and don't feel like it has to be a polished document or, or completely. I mean, we'll look, we, we can do that that work to, to get stuff formatted and, and vetted. But we're looking for, if you're an agency out there who's got tremendous experience and lessons learned with a certain vendor or, or a certain acquisition challenge, I mean, or you have a certain tool or resource that you've used that you can identify, then we're, we're all about trying to leverage that. Um, and of course, give you full credit, but get that shared out among our federal partners. So we you know we really look forward to this, this collaboration. We're gonna do our, our best here. We'll continue marketing the VMO. I'm, I'm trying to get, we, we haven't quite got our cadence yet and how often we wanna try to pull these types of uh, you know days together, but I, I'm hoping that we can do them. Uh, maybe it'd be shorter, a little bit more formal, or at least get a webinar out with the, the latest and greatest messaging. and. And on the website, we'll have a kind of a need set, you know, things we're looking for, um, you know, from agencies to support us. So again, thank you. Uh, you know, thanks for, you know, listening. We still have a, a, a good number of participants on. So hopefully if you're, you're hanging with us and uh, I, I and like Kara said, uh, you know, we're, this is a partnership and we're really looking forward to, to working with all of you. Uh, so thank you. Over, to, I guess over to the over to you, Kyra, for questions and answers. Okay. Uh, hopefully, you all can hear me. What we wanted to do at this point, uh, because we have provided quite a bit of information to you, uh, to give you an opportunity to present uh, questions that you may have uh, to us. So, if you look on the bottom of your screen, some of you have taken advantage already. There is a Q and A uh, prompt down there, so I believe you can submit questions that way. Or Jeremy, correct me if I'm wrong. Should they be going through the chat for questions? No, there there is a Q and A pod uh, specifically denoted as such. So if you click on that, it should open up, and then you should be able to submit your questions. Perfect. Thank you. 
So as John mentioned, we appreciate you hanging in there with us for an hour and a half uh, through the talk. Uh, we'll give you all a couple minutes. If there are any questions uh, that you would like answered, uh, we're happy to address those. Okay, now I'll acknowledge one of the first questions that came in. It's actually a very good question. Um, it's asking if there will be CLPs issued for this training. Um, we have not considered that at this point, but if there is a way to retroactively do that, and I don't know if my acquisition counterparts are uh, screaming as I say that, um, we will uh, consider that. But at this point, uh, we had not uh, prepared to do that. Another question, um, and, and I'll talk to this, were there any lessons learned um, from establishing uh, the ITVMO? Um, the government is vast, right? So we know even within a single organization, we aren't always aware of all the programs that exist. Um, cast your net as wide as possible is one thing that we can take away from this process. Um, we learned that uh, we have a VMO even within the GSA uh, that we were able to talk with and learn from and, and potentially partner with moving forward. Um, so really reach out to, to listservs when you're trying to, to find information on, on any one thing. Um, that was probably one of the surprises that we found that there were so many uh, organizations, programs that had similar interests as our own. Um, that we uh, really uh, could, could learn from um, and partner with. There are so many uh, programs that have an interest in IT acquisition, um, the acquisition side of things, the IT side of things, folks who are working to support category management already, uh, the program managers, it really is a diverse group. And so we continue to really grow our ecosystem uh, every day. And so there's been a lot of talk today about really wanting you guys to engage with us. So if you represent a component, a segment of government that we haven't spoken to today, please email us, itvmo at gsa.gov so that we can bring you into the conversation and look to partner. Um, yeah, hey, hey, Kyra, this is John. I guess the, I'm looking at the panelist questions and I guess one came in for either for Maria or, or Leslie or Vera, I guess. You see that? Okay. Um, do you see that under the panel chat? Let me take a look there. Um, if you see it, Johnny, you want to ask it, please go ahead. Yeah, so the question is, uh, how has the federal IT marketplace changed over the past five years? And what do you predict will happen in the next three years, next five years? And then this question is posed to, uh, I guess, either to Maria or Leslie, um, you know, or Bear, I guess. So. Yeah, and I guess, did we lose? I think it would be really good to get the... Um, OMB champion perspective to from that and it looks like I don't did we lose them and I know they might be coming back a little bit later but I did I did also want to follow on it um, a little bit to what um, Kyra was saying about the lessons learned and for me coming in as things were part way and it is really having that the champions, which, you know, Leslie, Maria, and, and, you know, certainly Jennifer on the OMB side and pulling together the right talent. So bringing, you know, Kyra into the organization on a detail and leveraging, you know, Warren and Pang, and then being able to look to find John who was already there and had a lot of the experience to, to pull in. Um, and that reaching out and partnering with, you know, NASA and, and NIH, um, you know, a, across the board and reaching out to DOD. Um, a lot of uh, uh, great innovations and things both in IT and in acquisition do, you know, start in, in defense. So I think it's casting the net wide, having the right talent and having champions to help you drive forward. And of course, having, you know, a budget, of course, always helps. So I have uh, a question uh, for Darlene Cohen or Glennis Fisher with uh, Soup and NITAC, uh, respectively. Maybe we can start with Dar Darlene. Uh, what's one thing your best-in-class vehicle is doing to address current IT challenges? And Glennis or Darlene, if either of you are on with us, if you want to talk to, to that one. Uh, something your big vehicle is doing to address current IT challenges. This is Glennis. I'd be happy to start with that one. Um, well, one thing we've done 
is with the upcoming CIO SP4 GWAC, we've taken the opportunity to engage more with other agencies to find out what their IT challenges are and how we can better leverage the upcoming CIO SP4 to push for technological transformations and to improve government IT. Um, also, I think, you know, during COVID, we've had to pivot a lot to rely even more on our website and social media to communicate with our customers and to also make sure that they were seeing our insights on, you know, how they can address their IT challenges. We've put more emphasis on our director's corner blog and we tackle different topics that we think the community might be interested in um, and try to provide best practices. And we've started featuring blogs on things like uh, cyber technologies, which of course everyone's interested in and how you decide if an IDIQ is the best vehicle for you. And also try to, you know, sort of just up our game with our YouTube channel and our solution showcases, which spotlight um, opportunities and how our contract holders have helped customers. And they're just really short little blurbs because we know everyone's very busy. I can keep going, but I think that's it essentially, the most important issues. Thank you, Gwyneth. Um, John, I know you're on. I don't know if you wanted to maybe talk on behalf of, of Soup about yeah, Kira, thanks a lot. Um, and uh, first of all, thank you. Um, Darlene is having um, uh, some connectivity issues as well. And so um, I'm picking this up where, where, where she's lifting, leaving off. Um, you know, clearly supply chain risk management is, is something that is a concern for everybody in acquisitions, not only from the uh, PMO side, right? The, the, the actual programs that have to secure our infrastructure, but for contracting, Personnel as well, we've had to deal with certain things, uh, for example, 889, uh, that, that uh, uh, regulations that, that, that came out and caused us to act, us as, a, as, a, as an ITVMO community, uh, as well as, as a CIO. So that's certainly a trend that's gonna be continuing over the course of time. And, and um, you know, NASA Soup has been working uh, in the area of supply chain risk management for about 10 years now. And so we think that we're a pretty good resource when it comes to that, or at least the reseller space and uh, 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 making sure that you're, you're adhering to uh, certain guidelines when it comes to counterfeit products. Um, uh, we're, we're advocates of the uh, ISO 20243 um, uh, uh, ISO standards that are the only standards that we know of that are out there um, that are commercial standards for supply chain risk management and clearly we're working with uh, the groups that are here as well as as well as uh, DHS and others on, on uh, uh, other supply chain standards and, 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 and initiatives to secure the supply chain. The other thing you know what are the other challenges with, with IT? A lot of it also has to do with data. Um, data is uh, you know, something that CIOs rely on. Uh, they rely on it more now than they ever have before. Um, not only from the, the transactional point of, you know, how much did I pay for, for that, uh, but even more so and more importantly, um, people like Maria Rope and, and others, they've, they've got to account for their inventory. And inventory. They got to know where things are um, for, with, with specificity and, and our acquisition system is, is one of those uh, data inputs that CIOs and, 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 and CISOs rely on in order to account and, and, and manage for what it is that they have. And, and so, you know, NASA soup, we, we, we have a pretty good data set. Um, we, we, uh, we put a lot of thought and time and attention in capturing what it is that we do. And, and, and uh, we want to continue to put that data into the hands of CIOs so that we can help them and their acquisition personnel uh, account for what it is that they need to account for from an IT perspective, from a security perspective, and from an acquisition perspective. Thank you, that is great perspective. Um, and John, we have a question that I think um, is best answered for by you rather. 
Um, yeah. And it, will the VMO be working with others across government on use case or user stories library and a complementary solutions library, starting with the architecture that can link to other such libraries throughout government? Yeah, I mean, it, it, this, the answer is absolutely. If you think about, um, you know, how we want to, you know, manage content, um, you know, we can't be the expert on, on every vendor uh, or every artifact. So the idea is we have to, we really have to create a content management architecture that, that leverages, uh, you know, that SME expertise or, or, or you know, set of artifacts that are, that are inherent in a, in a certain agency or, you know, or a government entity. Uh, if you look at NIST, for example, right, NIST is, has a lot of specificity, but we definitely want to, in our website, you know, provide uh, the, the coverage so we can link, um, you know, to those different sites and, you know, help our agencies. You know, we, we don't want them to be frustrated, you know, searching on our, our, our site and not be able to access, you know, all of the types of information that they're, they're looking for. So that's going to be, that's front and center. It's part of the website. I think the initial website we're putting up is just really about the, or the portal, we want to call it is really about it's it's a phase one just trying to get our presence established you know put up the different content areas uh you know make sure people can reach us uh, that type of thing but secondarily uh that's going to be a big focus next year is content management in general you know how do we how do we co-opt all these other experts and you know if an agency has a specific question they know it should be able to link but they should be able to contact that sme so that, there's a lot of semantics there that we have to put in place to make that happen. But, a, you know, a great question, and, and which I appreciate, because I think it's really going to, it's, it's really where we need to be, uh, you know, as, as a federal-wide VMO office. Thanks, Kyra. Thank you, John. Hey, Warren, we, we thought maybe you would have some additional perspective on BICS that you might want to add, going back to uh, the previous question about um, how BICs are addressing uh, challenges, IT challenges in federal space. All right, well, we'll come back. I'm working really hard to maintain my government-wide hat for this event as opposed to the, the GSA ITC hat. So I'm gonna let um, Warren uh, speak to that. Um, but the, the other question that's in there is, uh, were government and industry stakeholders receptive to IT VMO engagement and I'll start backwards with with industry and um, Leslie and I went on a little bit of a road show to some industry groups um, to talk to them uh, about what we were doing and to, to garner some feedback and got a very warm reception um, and then I'm going to open it to uh, Kyra and I think Jennifer's on as well uh, anybody else who wants to speak, you know, from starting earlier on and collaborating up, across um, with other stakeholders beyond our um, our ESC partners, our steering committee partners. Yeah, I, I'd love to to kind of build on that. As Vera said, industry was uh, very welcoming of of the idea, um, and and government we certainly had uh, a lot of of interest in supporting kind of a government wide uh, vantage point on IT acquisition. So much interest, though, that we got a lot of suggestions about taking on a very diverse portfolio, uh, probably uh, more than was practical in at least this first year uh, of operation. But I think it, it's recognized that um, there, there is a need to kind of centralize the, the focus for kind of IT acquisition strategies to um, be more collaborative and focused in, in working with um, the original equipment manu uh, manufacturers and the value added resellers, OEMs and bars, so that um, we're able to, to be more strategic in how we engage and not end up with different responses and different prices. Uh, so uh, that recognition uh, was, was there. Uh, one of the points that I hit on, which came out of that, which was some hesitation, was that we were potentially duplicating some of the things that other officers were doing. Um, and so what we were able to do in cases like that was to sit down and understand um, kind of where the lines in the sand were 
what were um, things that were already happening and happening well that we could perhaps leverage and pull, you know, resources kind of into our umbrella uh, so that we could share out. So in that way, we were more a facilitator of information and services than a provider. So uh, that was something that we also heard as, is where can we um, focus more uh, uh, intently you know, because we can't do everything anyway, uh, we don't have the, the resources, where, where would our swim lane be and where could we tap our colleagues across GSA and across government uh, in other areas. So uh, that was uh, one of the things that we learned as we reached out. But in general, I think folks are positive uh, about this and are excited to see us do more. Yeah, I think you, you raised some really excellent points there. And I realized we didn't, um, we're, we're in the forming, norming, storming, you know, uh, model. And for the uh, executive steering committee, we have uh, met once as a formal group and based on the survey feedback um, and that long list, because we all looked at the list of, oh my gosh, this is a lot to do. We have limited resources. Um, and the next EBC meeting that we have coming up is really to um, provide our, our plan forward and the things that we're gonna be tackling first and getting formal approval from everyone on the board. So we do have a really good governance model in place to make sure that we're picking the right things and we're prioritizing the right things and, you know, and really um, making use of what's out there. Like Kyra was saying, we're not looking to duplicate, we're really looking to complement and to really partner and collaborate across uh, government. And, and if at the end of the day, back to my help is defined by the recipient, um, if, if what we're doing and focusing on isn't helping you, know, you our most important stakeholders, then we pivot. Yeah, Vera, can I add to that? Uh, just to mention, I've, I've already received uh, probably a dozen or so requests um, and, you know, for, for conversations with industry because they, they want to provide content around around acquisition. For example, one of the one of the vendors uh, to listen, you know, I've, I've been in this game a long time and I, I think I was on the federal side as well. And I'd like to put some templates up for, for how to craft a, a sue, you know, the things you should consider when you're developing your requirements. And it was really, when I looked at it, I said, wow, this is really, um, this is great stuff that I think would, would, would many agencies could benefit from because they have a lot of the, I mean, the things to think about when you're, when you're putting together a, a set of requirements and business requirements and you turn that into objectives. So that's just one example, but I think we're seeing lots of interest from industry uh, and I think we mentioned early on here that we are going to have an industry day uh, here, uh, probably in the March timeframe. And uh, so we'll, we'll open, we're going to open this up. And, uh, you know, that's part of the vendor management office. They're on the, they're, they're the, the people we have to broker for the, for the agencies. So we, we're looking forward to that. And of course, anybody on this call would, could, could certainly attend that as well and, and hear from industry because we're looking to have, you know, some of those folks speak and, and, and give us their perspectives. So thank you, Vera. Thanks, John. Yeah. Um, another question, and uh, maybe we'll direct this one to Glennis Fisher with NITAC. Um, how can uh, the IT VMO, how do you anticipate the VMO will help to amplify or promote um, opportunities with your vehicle? How can we, we support and, and um, increase your reach? Sure, Kyra. Um, we have found that even within NITAC, our potential customers, um, at, even at an, our own agency and our department, consider using other options that are not BIC vehicles. And one of the things that we would really like to see a focus on and feel that it's imperative is that the ITVMO educates the acquisition community on the value of using the BIC vehicles and why that should always be considered to be the first option. Um, there should be uh, I guess more um, discussions and more uh, notifications and, and sort of just a, a better 
way to communicate um, NITAC. We've tried to have um, you know articles that talk about why the BIC makes the most business sense, but the education really, it could be done in a much more comprehensive manner by you at the ITBMO level. And I think that would be really helpful. Thank you, Glennis. Um, John, just to give you an opportunity as well to, to share if you have any thoughts on how uh, the ITVMO can help uh, Sue. No, I, you know, it, it's very, uh, and, and, and really, I'm not, I'm not answering this question towards you, Kira. It's more of an observation and one for, um, um, for a lot of the folks that are engaging with the ITVMO. One thing that Glennis didn't mention, but it's, it's sort of tacit in the way that we work, and, and we work closely with one another. When we're working with an agency, um, you know, every, you know we, we do try to help uh, agencies indicate which of the vehicles would actually be the, be the best for them to use based on their requirements and given their situation. Um, each of these vehicles are a little bit different. They're made differently. They have different structures with different purposes. And, um, and, and, and although we are all scoped the same and you can have the similar reach within each of them, we're also contract professionals and we put ourselves into the seat of the acquisition person making the buy. When, whether it's Glennis or myself or another member of the NITAC team or someone from GSA, we're putting ourselves in the position of that person buying. And when they're asking, uh, which vehicle should I use, we're putting that perspective and that hat on. So we're no longer, and it should never be about the vehicles. The vehicles within, within this are, are actually secondary. What's primary is the requirements, what's needed by the agency, and having some good people around you that can say, yes, if I was in your shoes, I would be using this vehicle, and these are the reasons why, even when that vehicle is not your own. And quite frankly, we do that all the time. We do that more on the quiet side rather than the public side, uh, but it's a good practice, and it also lets you know, people call us back. They call Glennis back when Glennis says, you know, talk with these people. When John says, you know what, I'd go check GSA out, talk to the folks at EIS, because that's the way that I'd buy that if I was in your situation. Um, you know, that's, that's the trusted partnership that people look to have with each other and within this community. And so that's something that I think we should all kind of work together and build on. I think that's a excellent point. And, um, Warren, were you able to recap? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. And I just wanted to add to what, um, Glennis and John said on that particular question. So, um, we think the ITVMO will be able to assist. Um, not only their vehicles, but all of the vehicles in our portfolio with regard to more data. Um, we are aware that the category management program has data via the category management PMO office. Um, and we use uh, a, a lot of that is housed in the repository called dashboards. Um, so we do leverage that data now, but the BMO is going to go a step further and do some data mining with that and some other resources. And that will uh, help shape a better buying decision uh, for agencies in terms of us uh, saying, yes, we want you to use these existing bits instead of you going out to create other IDIQ contracts in the open market space. So, Excellent. and I believe there was another question. Yeah, Kyra, do you want to? Yeah, since, okay. um, since we have you, Warren, uh, okay. we'll up your alley. <laughs> How will the ITVMO efforts impact IT Schedule 70 offerings? Um, so I, I would I would go as far as to say how will it impact? It will probably go beyond IT Schedule 70 since we just had the mass consolidation, which now combines IT Schedule 70 with the, um, 23 other schedules. Um, so it will probably better um, inform that process again through data because at the schedule level, we all know that there's, we do not have access to transactional data. Um, and so a lot of that information is coming through our uh, TDR efforts and a lot of our schedules are not part of that effort. 
And so what we need to do is find a way to expand um, the transactional data rule to some degree so that we can capture a lot of that transactional data that will actually help us get to uh, where we need to be in the schedules program as a whole. So not just schedule 70, but the whole schedules program. Thank you for that, Warren. And that takes us right mm -hmm. up to time if we want to stay on schedule. Again, thank you for all of those who participated in our Q&A session and provided some really insightful questions. Um, they encourage us to think about how we'll move forward uh, and provide us with some perspective on the things that are most important to you. Uh, and with that, I think we can advance um, in the slide deck to our closing. So I'll turn it back to you, Vera. Um, yes, and I see we have, uh, Leslie, are you um, able to connect? Because um, I, did, I didn't know if Leslie wanted to talk a little bit about the road ahead or the impact that category management has had on IT and really just some closing remarks um, from your chair. Yeah, no, that's great. And I'm, I'm back. Um, sounds like you guys have had a great discussion. That's really exciting. Um, so I, I do think that the groundwork that we've laid in category management is going to help on a number of fronts. And as you think about the new priorities and uh, a lot of the executive actions, I, I think because the category managers are are so knowledgeable and they've built up such a terrific network across the government. They've got access to data that we've never had before. Um, and then we've just, it's just an entirely different way to look at what we buy and how we buy it that I think the category managers um, and the teams will be pulled into lots of different discussions uh, on how to implement a lot of um, sort of the, the new priorities. I talked a little bit at the beginning about uh, the Made in America um, executive action. And I would imagine that the category managers will, will be asked to think about, you know, what does their supply chain look like? Um, where are their opportunities? How can we partner with you know, perhaps the states have great ideas about, um, you know, the, some of the vendors in their space and what they're doing. I know there's some manufacturing extension program work that um, DHS has been doing. So I think there's a lot of opportunity coming up. Obviously, we're going to reset on the PMA um, and we're going to continue to advocate for, uh, you know, category management. I, I, I think the success has just been uh, tremendous and, you know, but I don't want to take our eye off uh, all the good work that we're doing. And I think um, what we're building here is kind of the next generation. Um, so uh, I think we're really well positioned to do to do great things and uh, in, in this administration. So thank you for putting this together and thanks for all the questions. I was able to listen in a little bit there. So thanks again. Thank you. And we really want to thank each and every of you. Um, you know, um, thank you, Leslie, for those great re closing remarks. Um, we want to thank everyone for joining us uh, because, you know, back to the point, we're really here to help you um, as our key stakeholders across uh, government. So I hope you're walking away understanding a little bit more about what the ITVMO is um, and uh, we'll follow up with additional access. I know we've got uh, links and so forth that we've provided and we are always open to feedback and additional um, ideas and information. Uh, the email address has been provided, and I really just would like to thank the entire team, both on the ITVMO, our ESC partners, uh, OMB, uh, the entire, and, and each and every one of you for helping us uh, advance um, and improve and innovate uh, in how we buy uh, technology. So with that, um, thank you everyone and have a great rest of your afternoon.